All right, what's up guys? I'm gonna make a quick onboarding video here. I've already made one, but this is for the new version and it's a lot more straightforward. So uh, all you'll do, make sure you're logged into Seller Central, go up to onboarding. Uh, this video here is what you're watching right now, uh, but go ahead and hit um, download onboarding reports. That's gonna take you to Amazon. It's gonna open up two screens here uh, for your all listing report and then for your fee preview report. You don't really need the fee preview report unless you want to use the uh, profit calculator in the SKU dashboard tab, but I'd go ahead and just import it to begin with. So just go to free fee preview, click request CSV download, and you're just going to, once that says download, uh, you'll download that to a Google Drive folder. Same thing over here, you're gonna go down to all listing report, hit request report, and you'll just wait until uh, that downloads ready and then uh, save it and put it in a Google Drive folder. Once you've got it in a Google Drive folder, I've already got one set up, just go up to import and go to your folder. You'll have the two files here, double click on all listing. You can change this to insert new sheet. Go ahead and insert it. And what you wanna do with this one is drag the, just click once on A, drag the item name after the SKU let go, same thing with the ASIN, drag that next. And then you also want the product ID type. There is the fourth one. And then go ahead and make a filter like that and just hit Z to A. And basically you wanna rename your number threes to FBA. If you click once in the cell, you'll get a little cross there in the bottom right. Just drag it down, let go. And then if you wanna bring in your FBM products as well, you can change that to FBM, and then the number ones here become FBM. So once you get that one, go up to import and grab your feed preview. Double click, same thing, insert new sheet, import data. All right, and then if you're selling in Canada, you'll have both units here. Just click once on dimensions, make a filter and do Z to A, and then you just wanna grab the American E standard units. All right, so copy that data, and then you're gonna go over to uh, the second step here, paste all listing, file, and then uh, let's see if I lost it, paste values, there you go. So just make sure you don't accidentally overwrite this column in red, you should see your prices there show up. All right, and then you're gonna go back to the all listing report data and just grab these four columns and that's what goes into the all listing report. And then you can go ahead and just delete these now, you're done with them. And that's really it for the onboarding. So now all you need to do is, we can actually hide that if we want, go back up to the second Okay, we just did the second step. Go ahead and hit sync product dashboard, and that's gonna take your all listing report data and build out your SKU dashboard here. All right, you'll get a sync complete. And we're done with the onboarding process now. We need to go and get our uh, first bulk file. So you can go through this sequence now. So just hit get bulk file. That's gonna take you over to the ad console. I'd recommend when you first get started, either do like a 60 day span or a 30 day span. Um, I'll do my first few with 60 and then as I start to kind of get my feet under me, then I switch to 30, but you can do however you wish. I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, 30 day here just for an example, so you'll just do that. Make sure you have terminated campaigns checked and then brand asset data, go ahead and check that. Then just hit create spreadsheet. And then when this downloads, go ahead and save that to a Google Drive folder which I've already got set here. So you'll just go import and then uh, training files and then you'll go bulk download. I usually name it the date. So then do insert new sheet, import data. And you'll do this each time you want to do a new optimization cycle. You'll just delete your bulk file tab down here at the bottom and then open this system up, go to import, grab your new file. Now, depending on how big your bulk file is, if it's greater than 130,000 rows, then you may have to do some pre-processing to get the file in, either through Excel or you can open it up natively in Google Sheets and remove some uh, remove some rows that way. But um, if you are able to get it in, like I just was able to there, there are some performance optimization 
scripts here you can run to remove uh, certain things. So you basically, if you want to re remove, for example, all your paused targets, just go ahead and click that, hit yes. That'll take you over to your bulk file. You'll see it's going to add some additional columns here. It's going to remove uh, some of the paused targets that you're not going to be dealing with. So if, you're, if you don't plan on dealing with those in this optimization sequence, you don't really need them in here. Um, and it's good to remove those from the get-go just to make sure everything is as speedy as possible. So this will take a few seconds and then once it's done you'll get a prompt here. It says your data has been cleaned. Go ahead and hit OK. It goes ahead and resorts everything for you as well. Um, it will look a little jumbled and have some additional campaign columns and whatnot but um, don't worry about that. It's not, it's not important. The Next step is all you'll do is initialize your bulk file. So go ahead and hit that button, hit yes. And what this is going to do, it's going to add some additional columns on your bulk file and just kind of set up some of the advanced filters so you can uh, quickly maneuver around your bulk file and, and see what you need to see. All right, so I let that just run real time so you could see it. That was with a bulk file of about 30,000 rows, so you can kind of compare the time on yours. Uh, if you do start running into errors, you know, the 130,000, that's quite a bit, and there may be some lag with how fast your computer is and whatnot. Uh, you may need to run a few of those optimization scripts there at the beginning before you run the initialization sequence, but go ahead and hit OK when you get this prompt, and once you uh, see it finished up here, you'll have the additional columns off to the right. You can see you've got uh, conversion rate. Here's your single SKU columns if you've got a single SKU ad group set up. But I'm going to give you just a few steps here that I would recommend you do uh, when you first get onboarded just to kind of learn the system and get a feel around how things work. So hop over to uh, your settings page first. Make sure you've got your enabled products dashboard set and go ahead and deselect that as well. Uh, you can go ahead and tweak these if you want. There's some other videos on the Stop Optimizer tool, the Search Term Inspector tool. Uh, there's a brief one on the custom bulk filters. Custom bulk filters is pretty easy. It's basically these filters right here in this section. It'll allow you to quickly look for your top of target or your top converting targets. So I'll go ahead and hit that really quick. And really the goal of this system is to use the, I like to, I like to say the 80-20 rule uh, where 20% of your targets are giving you 80% of the results. And this quick filter here gives you the majority of those. You know, you there's another way you can get them pretty quickly. If you go to add insights and add this add group breakdown tile, So that's going to hop you over to the labs tab and it's going to give you a it's going to give you a report here and you can double click on the total. These are your total enabled targets. And it's going to give you a um, uh, separate sh sheet here that's fixed values. So you can pretty much manipulate this however you want. Um, and if you go over to orders and then do a filter and then do Z to A. Here's your all your enabled targets in order of highest orders uh, to the least order. So if I just select V, you can see I've got about uh, 1900 total orders in this bulk file. Now if I go down 80% of that is what? Let me do a calculation. 1900 times 0 0.8, 
1520, so we just need to go down to where it says 1520. There's 1300, 14, so went past it. So it looks like it's right six orders or more. So you can see of my whole entire sheet, which I've got a really uh, big cursor over here as far as scroll bar. Um, th those top 20% of targets, and it looks like less than 20% in this case, are giving me 80% of the results. So um, I've got a few videos on the uh, on the um, training so far that show you how to optimize your account and essentially um, archive or pause some of these ones that aren't giving you hardly any results. And that's a way you can kind of start out uh, maybe a, a disorganized account if if you want to kind of get started fresh. You can um, just get moving forward with these ones that are converting well and then uh, create new campaigns that hopefully you can scale up with. But uh, if you just want to start with what you got, that's fine. What I would recommend is getting a few targets over on the bid override table that are converting well. Um, you know, this is obviously one way you can do it. A faster way, though, is if we did not go through the Add Insights tile and we just use the uh, top target filter here. All right, and then what I would like to do is I'll sort by orders again, and this will give me over here, if, if there's a field in this AC column, it means I've structured that campaign so there's only one SKU um, in that campaign's ad group. So I'll know that any you know clicks, sales, what have you from that uh, target will be associated with that SKU. So with that, um, these are the ones where you can really rank um, you know, improve your organic rank, especially if we use the, uh, we'll want to use the exact match words that we've got. So I'll just clear that, hit exact, then I'll grab both of these, and you may have more, hopefully. Um, go ahead and grab those guys, and I'm just going to use this as an example. Um, now these these fields here, you may get some invalid inputs, um, and that's just do the data validation on these drop downs if you don't uh, match that it throws a little error, but you can still override it. It's not a big deal. So if you hit Control Shift V is in Victor on the keyboard, um, that'll paste that in. And what you can do now is override these targets. And the goal is the top 20% of your terms that are really performing well. You want to allocate a lot of your budget. Keep a close eye on those. Just uh, make sure your is segmented, and um, and and have your bid input set accordingly to improve your organic ranks on those and just maximize your sales. So that's the idea of this bid override table. Um, I like to segment at the target level when all possible. Uh, I've got a few overview videos on how you can also set up your uh, segmentation by portfolio or campaign. Um, and then this over account level here at the top, just keep that there. That'll be your, uh, your like default fallback if you don't have your SKU dashboard set. Um, that's that's kind of where your fallback inputs will be at that that level there. So um, what you'll want to do though on this, go ahead and go up to bid overrides, sync metrics, and this is just going to bring in the metrics for these new targets that we just added. So you can get an idea of where your cost per clicks are at, your ACOS, and just kind of see it all in one little place. So once that loads, you've got a few options. You can look at your cost per click here if you're running like dynamic down only. Uh, one thing you could do is like set these to a dollar and just let it run for a few days and see how you do on conversions. So you can see here my cost per click is at about 75 cents on that one, about 54 cents on this one. So um, I would hope if you'd, you bid you know, 25 cents higher or so, you could, you'd be able to maintain that top of search placement if that's what you're going after. You can click on these um, pictures over here and go to the actual search product or not product page but the search page on Amazon and you can actually look and see if you are at top of search the other nice thing with this screen here is you can use a uh, filter here for show override campaigns and that's useful for um, your daily budgets so let's say your I uh, only, only have a $5 campaign budget set here, but you're making a ton of sales. You want to make sure that that's 
quite a bit higher so you use that filter there uh, to filter your bulk sheet and it'll display these two campaigns for you that you can make that change uh, to maybe bump it up to like 15 or 20 bucks um, but what you'll want to do here just kind of get started is drag down some inputs and you can set actually I held in control there don't hold in control just drag it down normal um, so you can bump this up if, if you want to use the um, the bid inputs for your, your formula based bidding um, or again you can just do a fixed bid override but you would want to bump your target up on this one if it's one you're really wanting to go for to a higher value than preferably you know break your break-even ACOS or your gross margin or if you can afford to go a little higher I usually set my low bid at five or ten cents max bid there you're actually going to want to bump that up on this specific keyword just so to give it more um, you know room to uh, spend and then here you can pick if you're using the waterfall method that's why that's red is um, and there's descriptions here about how this applies I've got another video that explains all the, the formulas as well so I would check that out but um, I would usually set this you know if, if one I'm really going after set that there maybe 40 20 increase by 10 percent that's going to be for anything but over zero percent ACOS to 20 percent ACOS it'll multiply this um, you know increase your cost per click by this percentage so um, you know maybe bump that to 20 click limit these are going to be for um, setting lower bids for ad advanced clicks that without a sale so this just helps reduce some of your ad spend if you've got more than 11 clicks without a conversion impression limits this helps you increase your bid incrementally each step up you um, you would step up a, a cent in this case so I would probably bump that up to maybe five cents especially if it's a newer target that I'm going after if you don't have these two fields set it'll fall back to this just default fix 20 cents um, again I've got another video on these inputs but the idea is to, again to get on this list your top performing targets and really keep a close eye on and make sure you, you dial in your bid settings I like this waterfall bid method just to get started because it is the most conservative out of the three but you can watch the other videos that just explain the um, the different algorithms we've got input right now so when you after you segment it out any targets that you want to add to your bid override table you want to if it's your first optimization make sure you go over to your SKU level dashboard if you are using it and go ahead and make sure you drag down uh, your inputs let's see just go all the way down to the bottom obviously if you're not advertising on FBM you won't um, you don't necessarily need to worry about those but Go ahead and tweak any of these settings at the SKU level if you need to, and then go over to your bulk file. Um, and it's as simple as going up to optimize bids, and then if you want to do the waterfall bid method, hit yes. All right, you're going to get a prompt. Just go ahead and hit OK. And then one thing you can do is go to bulk filters and actions and see review bid changes, and this will just give you a kind of a before and after of what it was set to versus what it is now. And it's also got your um, current cost per click and then conversion rate there in between them. But your original bids there in column A in, and then your new bids there in AG. And then when you're done with that, all you need to do in order to create your upload file is click this button. But before you do that, make sure you have input your um, upload folder ID. I don't have mine right now, but you just want to make sure that's pasted in there. And then when you go and actually click your upload file, it'll put it in that folder. So then you would just navigate back to the ad manager, click choose file here, go get it from Google Drive, and then upload it. And uh, you should be good to go. That should adjust all your bids. And the next time you're ready to do an optimization, you would just delete this bulk file and then come back up here and then go down through the four steps again and if you want to use these filters say on the next iteration to um, maybe get some with really good conversion rates you can click that button so that filters the targets for our conversion rate criteria you can go ahead and hit ZA on this to give you your highest orders at the top 
and you know some of these product ASIN targets, you can do the same thing uh, as far as picking out some of these that are doing well, put them on your bid override table, and that's how you can keep a closer eye on them, segment them out, change the bidding up on them some, and hopefully continue to scale that way. The other thing you need to do is continue to add new campaigns each week, um, especially on your really strong uh, performers. So uh, the final version is going to have a link down here to the bulk campaign builder as well. Uh, you can watch separate videos on that that I've put out as well as the search term inspector. That's a really good way to find high converting keywords. But um, hopefully this video helps you get onboarded and get started. The um, if you, I think if you walk through the steps on this video, you'll at least get the kind of nuts and bolts that you need to get started and get your bulk file imported and get a new one created. So uh, give me a shout if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.